Um, thank you, Tom. Um, you know, this title probably sounds a, li a little bit strange to you. Um, growth in China grows under threat. Um, you know, because in the first quarter, economic growth was so strong in China. Year on year growth was 11.8%. And uh, according to the central bank, the quarter on quarter annualized growth rate was over 12%. That was very strong, cannot sustain for long. So, but financial markets look forward. I, I was in Europe last week uh, meeting with our clients. Of course, attention was so much on Europe, but still there were a lot of interest, a lot of uh, uh, questions on China. And the main concern is really going forward how economic growth in China uh, will perform. Now, um, today what, what I will do is to share with you my thoughts of three issues. One is how the policy tightening in China will affect growth in the next few, quarter, next few quarters. Um, and, and secondly, uh, specifically related to the housing market, because we have seen um, quite serious and significant tightening measures that have been done by the Chinese government uh, in, in the housing market. And, and you, know, you, you have probably heard that and many people argue that housing market is so important to the Chinese economy. If we see a significant correction in that sector, the whole economy is going to be brought down by that. So it's how serious is that concern? And the third issue is really, um, uh, and perhaps more related to uh, the audience here, you know, your interest, that is uh, the trade surplus has declined very significantly uh, in, the, in, the, in the past few quarters in China, and uh, how do we, set, uh, do we see that going forward? Is, are, we, uh, are we seeing only a temporary blip in China's trade surplus, or is this the start of a longer-term declining trend? Um, on the first question, we need to, uh, on the policy tightening, right? um, what have happened so far is uh, really, I would say, an exit of the uh, abnormally large policy stimulus happened in 2009. And that kind of policy tightening happened mainly in two ways. One is for the authorities to tighten credit supply by banks, mainly through window guidance and moral suasion, or more bluntly, you, you, you will call it administrative orders on banks to cut back on their lending. That's the main form of policy tightening. Right? And we have seen, indeed, the results of that you know, after the uh, very large lending, uh, new lending in January. We have seen in the past three months, uh, bank lending has slowed down very significantly. And at this rate, I would say uh, it is quite likely that the authorities will be able to achieve uh, their objective of limiting uh, new lending this year to 7.5 trillion MB. Now, how significant is that? Last year, it was 9.7 trillion. So it, it is a significant slowdown, particularly if we measure it in, in real terms because the inflation has picked up. But we should remember that 7.5 trillion still translate into about 17, 18% growth in bank credit this year, that is not restrictive to overall, overall economic growth. Right. And indeed, if we compare with the historical pattern, it basically returns to the kind of growth rate before 2009. So, so my overall message on the policy tightening is that yes, we have seen some policy tightening, but we are basically returning to the pre-2009 level in terms of the overall monetary conditions. And therefore, at this point, we do not see a policy tightening driven hard lending in Chinese growth. We are going to see some slowdown in Chinese growth, but that is really required or desirable in order to control overheating pressure and, 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 and inflation concerns. Um, 
that is that is my uh, my my view on the first question. On, on the second question about the housing market, um, what is the problem in the housing market in China? In my view, is that the investment demand has driven the housing price to such a high level is that it basically destroys the function of housing as a consumer good for many people, particularly low income and the younger generation. And that is damaging in my view, not so much you know, in the short term, but more really about the longer term, the, the, the efficiency of resource allocation. So, and, and, and particularly at, at this point, there has been a, a lot of or, or, or increasing social complaints or discord about, uh, about uh, housing affordability. And therefore, uh, my view on the housing is that you know, one can debate on what is a bubble or not, you know, whether uh, how much the price have uh, exceeded uh, the fundamentals. In those uh, issues, I would say there are a lot of uncertainties. But we should always remember that there is a one basic function of the government, that is to ensure reasonable uh, housing supply for the general public. And the problem, in my view, in, in China so far is that on the one hand, we have seen the prices have increased so much. On the other hand, there is a shortage of public housing to meet the demand of the low-income people. That's the problem. And therefore, we have seen, for example, uh, recently much more serious tightening measures or, or adjustment measures in the housing market, basically on two fronts. One is on investment demand to raise the down payment requirements and mortgage interest rate, for example, for the second mortgage, third mortgages, and beyond. The, the, the motivation really is to increase the cost of investment in property sector. And the second element is to increase the government construction of public housing. Right? And by a very significant extent, according to the government uh, statements. So how these measures will, be, uh, will, will have impact on, on, on the housing market? My, my, my view is that uh, if these measures are if implemented effectively, as they look like at this point from the, the policy, uh, uh, measures announced by not only by the central government but but also by the local governments. So I would not be surprised to see quite a significant correction in housing price in China in the next 12 to 18 months. Perhaps 20, 30 percent would not be surprising. I would say. Then the question is how this will impact on the overall economy. My my general observation is that the importance of the property market to the Chinese economy in the near term has been way, way overestimated or overstated. Right? Imagine in any economy, we cannot expect any particular sector always is on an upward trend. Right? For the longer term health development, sectors to consolidate at a different upper time. And that includes property market. Think about uh, the specific impact of a, of a decline in, on, on the economy. On the investment side, property construction has been accounting for around a quarter of total investment in recent years. And, and, and therefore, any slowdown in property construction will have an impact on overall investment. But even on that, we should remember that one of the elements of government measures uh, is to increase property, public housing construction. Right? And that should offer some offset, any slowdown in private housing construction. And secondly, on the consumption side, uh, a well-known concept is uh, housing price as asset price exchange will have worse impact on consumption. Now, I'm not sure that that generalization will apply in China's case. The reason is that in China, half of the population still live in the rural area where we don't have any active trading in properties. 
So for those people, price up and down, we 